Hi, this is Rhonda Layfield, and this demo on DNS queries is from my Microsoft Network Monitoring Training. I'm on my Windows 7 HR client, and the first thing we're going to do is kick off Network Monitor. We'll choose a new Capture tab, and the first thing I'm going to do is close that Network Conversations pane and maximize Network Monitor. I think everything else looks all right. Let's go ahead and kick it off for a start. And instead of diving right into going to a website, the first thing I want to do is show you. Look at that, we've got some DNS queries already. Busy, busy, busy. Let's go out to a command prompt and clean up that screen just a bit. And I'm going to ping. WBC DC2 in the wiredbraincoffee.com domain. Notice that we're getting a reply from 10 10 10 51. So what we've already got is the name resolution has been resolved from the Wired Brain Coffee DC2 WBC DC2 to 10 10 10 51. If we go look at that in our trace, Our IP address is the 200, and you know what? I'm going to stop the network trace because everybody's just booting up on the network, and it's a little bit busy, and I don't want things popping around on us. So there's our DNS, and you know what? Just so the only thing we're looking at is DNS, let's go ahead and do a little filter. We'll start with protocol, and it's going to be DNS. Apply that filter. And we want to look at, there's our 200. And you know, when I'm in these, I've already mentioned that I do like to create aliases just to keep this a little bit more simple so I don't have to think about the names of the machines. So 200, let's do a, that's our client. And then 50, well, that's our DNS server. How do I know that? Back at the command prompt. If I do an IP config all, I have this client set to be DHCP. You can see I've got DHCP enabled to set to yes. And then we can cruise down and find out my DNS server is 10, 10, 10, 50. That's because I've set up my DNS option. I believe it's option 006 um, in DHCP telling all clients the IP address of the DNS server as well. So that's how he knows who the DNS server is. So back to our network trace. Let's see where our client starts out here. We're doing just some regular DNS queries here upon boot. And you know what? I don't really want to see the time date, the time offset, process name. Let's get it down so I can see the important information. Now, as you can see, there are some DNS queries that are going to happen just by default for your Microsoft clients. One thing you'll notice here is I'm querying for download windowsupdate.com, and I'm doing that quite a bit here, trying to check in with the update servers to see if there are any new updates for me. The query we're looking for has to do with WBC DC2. So I'm going to scroll back up a bit. And here we go. There is our query for wbcdc2.wiredbraincoffee.com. So let's open that up and I'm going to scroll that up just a bit so we can get a little bit more space down here. Let's take a look at the frame details. So I'm going to close up the hex details pane because we're really not interested in that right now. Let's take a peek down here. What we're looking at is I can tell it's IPv4, not 6. Got my destination address is the MAC address of my DNS server, source address, MAC address of this client. If we open up the next section, we can see that it is the source and destination IP address. The protocol is UDP, which this is something rather interesting for DNS. If anyone ever asks you, what port does DNS use? Well, everybody knows it's port 53. You can see down here, destination port is 53. So whenever you install DNS on a server, it's like opening up a door, a magic door that's door number 53. 
and it allows all traffic that is destined for that door to come into it. That's why clients that don't have DNS installed won't have that door open or that port available. So it's not listening on port 53. But whether it's UDP or TCP is dependent on how much data is put inside the packet. Now, when we're just querying for one computer name, WBCDC2 in the wiredbraincoffee.com domain, that is enough data just to be put in a UDP packet. It's not so much data that will be broken up into multiple packets. Most of the time, your queries going to DNS are going to be UDP because they're relatively small and the query itself can fit inside a UDP packet. But when the answer is given, a lot of times, if we had more than one machine out there, and let's just take the scenario of asking for all the SRV records from DNS to try to find out for our clients who our domain controllers are in a Microsoft domain. In that scenario, we may have more answers that can fit inside a single packet. If you do have more answers that can fit inside a single packet, that'll be switched from UDP over to TCP. So there's error checking to make sure that all of the frames that were sent to the client actually get to the client. If they don't make it, then they're resent from the server again. So it's kind of a trick question if someone ever asks you what port, is it UDP or TCP 53 for DNS? Because it's actually both. So notice that I did mention this is UDP, and our, our destination port is 53 going to the server. Let's close that up, and let's come down and take a peek at the actual query itself. The question, we have one question in here. The question name is wbcdc2.wiredbraincoffee.com. It's an A record, which simply means it's a host record. That's all it is and we already know it's an IPv4. If we look at the response, let's close that up, the next packet you can see is from DNS to our client, and it actually says response, so we'll send out the query and we should get a response. If we look at that, once again, destination, source, MAC addresses, source, destination, IP addresses. This is a UDP packet, so it's not so big that it's gonna be put into TCP packets. Here's the source port 53, destination port, going back to the client. A lot of people call these ephemeral ports. They change all the time. So this could be a different port every single time the client attempts to talk to the DNS server. The only port that will always be the same is the port that the client is sending the query to, which is going to be 53. Now this is a standard query response, and you can see right here from the, just from the heading information, it was successful. And if we open this up, one thing that I've always found interesting is you get to see the question as well. So you don't really need to go in and find the query. If you just look for the response that you're looking for, you'll also have the question that was asked. So our question was, we're looking for the IP address of wbcdc2.wiredbraincoffee.com. And... Our answer is 10.10.10.51. Now there's one more piece of information I'd like to show you inside this data frame. Scroll back up. I'm going to open the flags. Remember I talked about whether the answer was authoritative or non-authoritative. You should be able to see that right here in the AA flag. If it's flagged as a 1 in this bit, it is authoritative. If it's a zero here, then it's non-authoritative. Now, you may be wondering why authoritative versus non-authoritative can be so interesting. What would happen if your internal DNS server performed iterative queries out on the internet, grabbed a resolution for you, cached it for 60 minutes, then the IP address that it just cached changed on the internet. Now this doesn't happen often, but it doesn't have to happen too often for it to fail for your clients to no longer be able to connect to that IP address. So now your internal DNS server has an incorrect IP address for a DNS query. So when your client asks for that information again, 
the server's not going to go out and perform those iterative queries, performing recursion again. He's just going to get the information out of his own little cache, pull it out of his back pocket, and hand it to the client. But the client will no longer be able to connect to that IP address because it's now been changed. So if you looked at the data packet and you saw that it was not an authoritative answer, what you might want to do is dump the cache on the DNS server, dump the cache on the local machine, and then perform the DNS query again. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.